Good evening, I'm Robert Lawson with New Cat News right here in New Ulm. The Planning Commission looks at a final plot for Oakwood UMC and the Human Rights Commission completed executive annual reviews. The Public Utilities of New Ulm held a presentation featuring Derek Nelson on energy rebates. New Ulm School Board will work to replace a walk-in cooler and freezer at Washington Learning Center. A unique daycare pod center business model in New Ulm is getting some attention. U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar visited the New Ulm Airport. She did what? A program from the Brown County Historical Society annual meeting. Duca took a look at printmaking at the Grand Cellar Press, and Dairy Queen closed on March 30th. Joey Vatt, a former New Ulm girls basketball player, is now a state champ for Minnesota State University. We'll take a look at the Brown County Board of Commissioner updates, and MnDOT held an open house in Sleepy Eye Tuesday and one upcoming in New Ulm for road improvements along highways in the area. Shells held a foosball tournament featuring an actual pro player. These local stories and state, national, and world news headlines coming up. for the Oakwood United Methodist Church, first edition. The locations are 1630 Oakwood Avenue for a church and 1630 Butker Road for a dwelling. The Human Rights Commission completed the executive annual reviews that included a review of the mission statement for the Human Rights Commission as well as the draft bylaws. The Public Utilities of New Ulm held a presentation by Derek Nelson on energy rebates. It was held at the New Ulm Public Library and featured New Ulm City Council President Andrea Butker at the end. Nelson spoke about rebate programs to help people get the most from local energy use programs in the community. New Ulm School Board is working on the purchase of a replacement walk-in cooler and freezer in the Washington Learning Center in New Ulm. The board discussed this on the agenda at the March 28th regular session from the Board of Education. A unique daycare pod business model is getting some attention around the state. U.S. Senator Tina Smith recently visited the facility which allows for several daycare providers to share a co-working space to respond to the need for affordable childcare services in the community. Several providers are able to consolidate and share resources to bring costs down for working parents in the community. U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar visited the New Ulm Airport, part of a statewide tour of counties, before she headed off to North Mankato to visit NIDAC. She also visited other businesses in nearby Winthrop, Wasika, and other communities in southern Minnesota. Both U.S. Senators Smith and Klobuchar are working on raising money for the regional municipal airport for runway and facility improvements. This will help enable more development and promote a regional hub for travel in the southwest part of the state. She did what? A program from the Brown County Historical Society's annual meeting took place March 21st. The program featured tales from New Orleans played in early 20th century style characters from members of the organization. New Cat took a look at printmaking at the Grand Cellar Press recently. Dairy Queen officially closed its doors March 30th. The DQ located at 1326 North Broadway in New Ulm closed its doors March 30th and originally opened its doors for business to the public on August 4th, 1950. After seven decades, the location, part of a national franchise headquartered in Edina, Minnesota, a Twin City suburb of Minneapolis, the quaint ice cream shop will no longer offer its hot eats and cool treats to locals. Joey Vatt, who helped Minnesota State University Mankato make NCAA history as one of two teams, both men's and women's, for basketball that won championships in the same season for the same team for Division II. She is also a former New Ulm High School girls basketball player. The Brown County Board of Commissioners met March 26th. They accepted and filed the Human Service Staff Update, the Heartland and Herman Express out-of-home placements testimony at the Senate Health and Human Services Committee, families First Prevention Services Act Grant and 2023 SNAP performance unanimously. Sheriff Jason Seidel met with the Brown County Board who accepted the 2024 Minnesota Boat and Water Grant Agreement in the amount of $2,821. MnDOT held an open house in Sleepy Eye Tuesday and will hold another one in New Ulm for road improvements along area highways. Uh, upcoming here in Highway 20, uh, 2024, we're going to be resurfacing Highway 4. Uh, from St. James all the way up to Sleepy Eye. It's roughly just shy of 25 miles. Um, with that, there will be some bridges replaced, uh, some box culverts, uh, specifically at uh, Butterfield Creek, just north of St. James, will be replaced from a small little bridge to a triple box culvert. The Highway 4 project between St. James and Sleepy Eye includes roadway, bridge, and drainage improvements. 
In addition to resurfacing approximately 25 miles of roadway, three bridges will be replaced. Additionally, the improvements made to the road will allow Highway 4 from St. James and Sleepy Eye to become a 10-ton route. Shells held a foosball tournament featuring a pro foosballer, Tommy Atkinson, a four-time world champion in the sport. He heard about the tournament while traveling through town. The tournament held a weekend in early April is the first of its kind in New Ulm and supporters hope to see it come back regularly. Minnesota announced a rebate program designed to reduce the cost for consumers that want to buy electric assisted bicycles. The rebate is worth up to 50% to 70% off the cost, up to a maximum of $1,500. Will Minnesota ever consider a universal basic income? Some think so. Minnesota has hosted five UBI experiments and now some lawmakers are considering a proposed $100 million to provide basic income to thousands. Corrections officials and inmates say Minnesota prison conditions are a matter of public safety. A decline in staff and rise in inmate population has exacerbated a long-standing problem at Stillwater Prison, according to reports. The Minnesota teen became the youngest ever to win the American Cup chess tournament. A North Oaks teenager made history in chess. 14-year-old Alice Lee took home first place in the 2024 American Cup. She's the youngest female American to ever do so. Three people died from a shooting that took place in a law office in Las Vegas. According to reports, shots were fired during a court deposition. The shooter killed two people before shooting himself. Trump has disenfranchised some ardent anti-abortion groups by saying he supports states' rights on the issue. Former VP Mike Pence criticized Trump for his stance on abortion as well recently. Janet Yellen visited China, concerned with the country's dumping of cheap products in American green energy markets. She said she would not rule out any measures, including potential tariffs on China's exports. A Wisconsin jury was finalizing the fate of Nicholas Milu this week. Jury deliberations got underway Wednesday. The man accused in a deadly stabbing on the Apple River in Wisconsin in July 2022. Deliberations continued through Thursday. A Republican lawmaker has warned that Russian propaganda has infected the GOP and said pro-Russian messages are echoed on the House floor. Representative Michael R. Turner, Republican Ohio, who chairs the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, warns that pro-Russian propaganda is infiltrating the Republican Party and that it was absolutely true that some Republican members of Congress were repeating Russian propaganda about the invasion of Ukraine instigated by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Turner did not go so far as to indicate which members he was referring to, however. The Vatican officially denounces gender-affirming surgery, according to the Associated Press. It declared gender-affirming surgeries and surrogacy are violations of human dignity. A new document from the Doctrine puts them on par with abortion and euthanasia as practices that violate God's plan for human life. Israel is pulling some troops from southern Gaza. Now the plan is to clear Hamas from Rafah, according to the AP. The IDF wrapped up a key phrase in its ground offensive against the Hamas militant group and brought its troop presence in the territory to one of the lowest levels since the war began. But defense officials said troops are merely regrouping. In the Russian-Ukraine war, Zaporizhia nuclear plant was struck by drones and shelling has become dangerously close to the facility. Critics urge both sides to stop firing munitions so close to the facility. Zelensky is calling for more support amid the Kharkiv bombardment. Cartel violence at the Guatemala-Mexico border is now severely impacting migrants who are trying to flee the violence to begin with. Recently, members of a group calling itself Cartel de Chiapas y Guatemala CCYG tore into a farming community in the town of La Concordia. Mexico's Ministry of Public Safety said five people were shot to death and 21 vehicles were torched. Just hours later, gunmen fired at Mexican National Guard troops near the town. Five gunmen died and 13 Guatemalan nationals were arrested. 21 AK-47 style guns were apprehended. That's your local, national, and world news from the Newcast Studio in New Orleans. I'm Robin Lawson.